talk, talk to me about your process now because, you know, obviously picking up a pretty disciplined. Um, mm. Where are you betting? How many places? How many days a week? Um, what, what does it look like? I'm looking at the field seven days a week. Um, basically, the uh, I cover Queensland, New South Wales. Uh, I try to stick to the maiden, like do the reviews on maiden racing in Victoria. And that's basically it. If there's something in WA that jumps out at me, if I'm working late at night, I'll, I'll just make some notes on that. But um, those three states basically is what I cover. Um, in regards to the way my week set up, the first couple of days of the week um, is lots of reviews. So reviewing races from the week before or two weeks before, wherever I'm up to. Um, I use my database ratings to win just to um, punch in sort of certain notes on, on races. So whether I want to um, adjust the overall rating, I think it should be faster than what it was or whether it should be slower than um, the rating, sorry, whether the rating's too high or too low, I can adjust that myself. And then I, I do try to put little comments in on horses that were unlucky or, you know, you know, there was um, inexplicable things happen. A $2 favourite might have ran last and stuff like that. I just like to make notes about those horses. So next time um, that horse comes around, I've got that sort of easy to access. So, yeah, the first half of my week is getting um, sort of the review stuff done as much as possible. And I'll pick through the black book sort of Monday, Tuesday is looking for obvious bets. Um, I've started doing a a preview now for the rant guys on Tuesday night. So I have to get ready for Wednesday's um, metropolitan meeting in Sydney. I'll just look for, yeah, you know, I'm not a detailed, I'm not very detailed. You might see my stuff is not as detailed as everyone else. Cause I don't sort of specialize in one area. I just look for obvious things, which might mean I, I can only come up with one or two bets a meeting, but um, if they're sort of good bets, I'm having, two or three bets a meeting across three different states. That's, that's a lot of bets, good bets to sort of get, get me by. So, um, yeah, so the first half of the week is just trying to re review as much as possible. And then the back half of the week is getting through your form for, um, I'm sort of rolling come Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. They're the big betting days for me. Yep. And um, any pressure so, up there? Is it, is it uh, Monday like a bit slower or...? Uh, yeah, but the first half of Monday is um, is a bit uh, you know casual, and maybe the back half of the day, um, the back half of the day, I'll uh, yeah get get into the form, and I do a lot of work at night actually. Once now that I've got kids, once they go to bed, sort of about eight between eight to midnight, I'll do a lot of reviewing um, during the week as well. So if I haven't done all my reviews. I'll get through sort of eight till midnight. We'll do reviews and stuff like that. So that helps me stay, stay on top of things to a degree. Yeah. Nice one. And t talk to me about these bets that are sort of really standing out to you. Are they just, you know, banking things in your head and in, in your ratings to win database of stuff that just had no luck the, the race before and you just got that horse in your head. You know, I, I want to see what price that comes up next start. I, I want it at yep. this distance or is it, yeah, is there yep. some specific examples that really shine through by using ratings to win and, and your video replay? Yeah, so um, basically ra ratings to win um, comes up with a few different sort of ways to rate a horse's performance. Well, like a lot of databases do, they basically put a number next to a horse's time. So basically if I... If a horse that you know, might draw 13 of 13, go back to last and then rock it home down the outside, possibly against a bias, whether it's a track bias or whether it was a pace bias on the day, if that horse happens to have a, a rating that's equal to any other horses in its next race, well, I know I can not only, that horse can not only run that same number again, it'll probably run an extra three or four or five lengths better if it happens to have a better a better barrier, a better jockey, um, those sorts of things. So I'm just looking for, once I identify a horse that's had a bit of bad luck or could run a better time, I look to see how they fit into the next race. And if, they're, if they've gone to a weak race or something like that, or they've drawn inside, I can automatically 
automatically bonus that horse three or four lengths and that can make them sort of really good bets. So that's one way to do it. Other way, other ways is like I said, like looking at various things like SP profile to forgive horses for inexplicable performances and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like it's tricky. Like a lot of the times horses that are black book or fine don't quite fit in on ratings, but of course the market is so, um, dictated to by race speed and race times uh, that's when i can use betfair to back those horses at the death who who don't have a figure that's anywhere near sort of what it looks like they're going to need to win a race i can back those horses at betfair on big, at big odds you know because they do have great chances even though they may have not run the time to sort of you know seemingly have them in the race next start yeah, right. So do you find yourself betting late on bet regularly as, as you know, it's probably yeah. betting against things that, that some of the bigger players haven't found? Yep, yep. So, um, yeah, like, as I said in my article, like, I wanted to get more organised early, but I sort of didn't really realise how crazy it is having kids and stuff like that. And I'm still trying to do three states worth of reviews. So I might find one or two bets that are early bets, but the majority of my bets are going to be late. Um, and when I say late, sort of most of them are sort of in the last sort of 10 minutes of betting. Mm. But if I've, if I've done my form race morning, to me, that's early. Like I might have a few bets, you know, come 10, 10 o'clock, um, okay. stuff like that. Because uh, the markets aren't really changing. Uh, there's, there's a theory a lot of pros talk about now that the best time to bet in the first 10 minutes when the prices first go up. Um, and that's like, you know, it can be three, two or three days before a race meeting. Mm-hmm. And I'm obviously not prepared for that. Um, yep. And then the other great time to bet is the last 10 minutes. So this is the first and last. Other than that, like, you know, just semi pros will knock off the price. You know, yep. they're not prof- not professionals, but like full time winners, but they've got enough reputation the bookie will just change their market off their bets because they know these guys are small winners or break square and they can shape, they'll just use them to shape the market. So if you're not ready in the first 10 minutes, I think the last 10 minutes of betting, the value starts because then the machines, the robots start to kick in that don't take into consideration that manual stuff. So yeah, the last 10 minutes sort of, and I'm, I'm such a big believer in sort of information to shape my bets now. So if I have a horse from barrier one at the start of the day, I might market $3 thinking just, just going to get a nice run up the fence. It's going to be happy days. If that fence happens to chop out, that horse that I've rate, rated $3 could easily be $6. So come jump time. So they're the sorts of decisions you start to make when you're, you need to win as a pun. Like, do I want to gamble that the inside is going to be the place to be and, Basically, I think the answer is no. You're better off waiting. Yeah. And mm. just just in terms of like race day on a Saturday, for example, have you got your prices that, that you've laid out at the start of the day? Have you, you priced every runner in Ramwick, for instance, or have you just got a price that you're happy to play out for particular runners? How does that work? Like how are you identifying on the exchange? Hey, this is, you know, five, row, five rolls over. Um, what yep. else prepared about? Yeah, so I basically just... I basically, the majority of my bets are just horses that I've made comments from in their previous couple of starts. So, yeah, I'll only, like, I'll I'll sort of, I'll spend the time pricing my horse as much as possible and just using the market to sort of price the other horses. Like, I won't, I'm not going to price sort of 13 or 14 horses to the dollar. I've just found it to be a bit of a waste of time from the way I do it. If I was specialising, I'd have the time to do every runner. Um, But I just focus on horses that appeal to me and um, just look at what the market's doing with them and and work in a time to sort of back those horses. So, yeah, I'm just sort of pricing my own and using – but basically, you know, I'll take anything above $3 horse um, X. Yeah. And um, due to it, I've got to... Basically, what I'll say is these other horses in this race, they've had no bad luck. They're going to run this number. So I'll, I'll just sort of use the generic ratings to 
win number to, to price them or, or use the market to price them. And then I'll say, well, if that's their price, I think my horse, horse X, I'm happy to take anything above evens or three dollars, etc. So I sort of just, yeah, I don't spend the time pricing every run. I let the market and some of my ratings automatically price the other horses. Yeah, sounds like a big time saver that rather than pricing every run. Well, it, it is. If, if you specialise, um, you could do that, and then you could start to identify the sort of bets that weren't. Sometimes the market just gets rid of horses inexplicably. Um, and then you look back after the race and you're just like, geez, that got out to a crazy price. But for me, I, I won't catch those horses because I'm not focused on them. But others that specialise, they'll be able to catch those horses. So there's lots of benefits in pricing every runner. Yeah. Um, but it's just not the way I'm betting at the moment. I just sort of like to pick off the best bets in various states and just let the market sort of save me time pricing the rest of the field.